Remember that in video 10, we looked at these two graphs and we determined that they are isomorphic. Here I'll show you how to determine this using SAGE. Let's start by looking at the graph on the right, which we've called H. I showed you in video 7 on the adjacency matrix and incident matrix how to get a graph in SAGE using its adjacency matrix. And SAGE is a free online program. You can use it online on their cloud, or you can also download it to your local machine and use it like that. It's also really useful if you want to work with graphs because there's a lot of built-in functions that work in particular for graph theory. I'll put links below so that you can check out Sage for yourself. So what we're going to do is in order to import graph H into Sage, we are going to think about what its adjacency matrix is. If you label the rows and columns of the adjacency matrix by A, B, C, D, E, F, and you write down a zero if two things are not adjacent and a one if two things are, so if that row and that column are adjacent, they get a one, then you'll get the following matrix. Here I'm writing down the rows of the adjacency matrix, and I'm typing them into Sage as I showed you to do in video 7. Now we have the rows of the adjacency matrix, so we tell Sage that we want it to be a matrix. Now we want to let H be the graph of this matrix. Now when we ask it to show us the graph, we'll see that it has labels 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Obviously, Sage uses this as a default. It's not going to label them A, B, C, D, E, F as we had in mind. But you can see that the graph we have here looks exactly like the graph H that we were looking at before. Now let's turn our attention to our other graph, G, the one on the left. We know that that was a complete bipartite graph with partite sets of size 3. So what we're going to do is make use of the Sage built-in function and just get the graph directly. So we can call on the graphs function and just ask for the complete bipartite graph with partite sets 3 and 3 and look at what we get we do in fact get the exact graph G we were looking at in our video. Now we want to ask Sage if these two graphs, which we've called G and H, are isomorphic. In Sage, that's really easy. All you have to do is type G dot is isomorphic to H. And Sage tells us that it's true. Now let's look at the other example that we did in video number 10. Here we have two graphs on eight vertices. What I want to do is focus first on the graph on the left. That was the graph we called G. We know that it had eight vertices, and rather than using its adjacency matrix to represent it in Sage, what I'm going to do is start by just making a graph on eight vertices, and then one by one I'm going to tack on the edges. So I use g.addEdge, and I have to put in every edge manually. Now I'm not going to call the vertices V1 through V8 as I did in the video. Here what I'm going to do is label those vertices 0 through 7. And so I think of the edge V1, V2 as being the edge 0, 1. If I look at what I get just from having added this edge, I see that indeed my graph has eight vertices and only one edge. So I need to add the rest of them on, and I've already typed them out before, so here they are. And you can double check yourself that this would correspond exactly to the edges we've seen in our example. Now when we do g.show, we'll see we do get the graph we were looking at, the graph G. It may look a little bit more three-dimensional the way that Sage represents it, but you'll see that all, ex all the relationships are exactly as we had them. The next graph, the last graph we have to look at, is our last one on eight vertices. Now I'm again going to use a Sage functionality here. You don't need to know what a circulant graph is, but in this case it's useful because this graph is the circulant graph on eight vertices with connection set 1, 4. This means that all of the vertices at distance 1 are adjoined and all of the vertices at distance 4 are adjoined. And that's what the graph that we had in our video. Now we have these two graphs on eight vertices. These are the ones that we showed were not isomorphic. So let's see what Sage tells us. We'll do g dot is isomorphic to h. And lo and behold, Sage tells you that it's false. So we've used Sage to prove exactly what we've already proved in video number 10. Sage is an extremely useful tool for doing this, and it works very well on graphs that don't have too many vertices. There's a lot you can do with Sage, so I encourage you to explore and have fun. See you next time.